Hi, good morning everyone. Jonathan again. New project today is going to be a scroll saw shelf. Hopefully this will show up a little bit better. So this is a wooden shelf. It's made from pine. And I've colored it with a wood stain. This one I made out of a 2x4. For the one I'm going to show today, it's going to be out of a 2x8. I want it to get a little bit bigger. Alright, step one. Get a piece of wood. Now, you have to get a piece of wood that's going to fit whatever you're going to do. Next thing is going to be make a section. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from corner to corner and make two edges. I use a marker so it shows up on the video. Yeah, I'm not measuring this really, I'm just gonna going for it. Alright, so there we have our wedge. Now the tricky bit is cutting that along there. Now I my table saw is not big enough to cut this, so I did it by uh, hand. It took a little while. And I got some of these. So think. That's your piece, following the cut line. You've now got two seconds. Alright, now to start our shape, use something small circular. You can use a coin, you can use a, a, a bottle, freehand it. I'm just going to use one of these little uh, um, uh, screw hanging thingamajigs. I just start it on the bottom. Notice I've drawn a center line down there. Just going to put it on there. And draw a circle around. Alright, that's step one. Alright, next thing you're going to need is either a bandsaw or a scroll saw. This is my new Record Power SS16V. I've got a uh, spiral blade in it. Now we're going to be cutting these shapes on a bevel. So what we need to do is adjust the table. Alright, so we have our wedge. And we have a slight angle at the back. So what we're going to do is we're going to match that angle to the blade. So I'm going to rotate the table. It's going to be about 10 degrees, I would think. And then we're going to lock it into place. So if I double check that real quick, uh, it's about 13 degrees. And then we're going to be cutting from uh, left to right, pushing around, following our line. Okay, before I start, I just want to give a quick shout out. This is not my concept. Um, I've been watching two guys on YouTube, uh, Cammy's Garage and Steve Garrison. Steve Garrison, uh, he's done a, great, a few great videos on how to make these shelves. Very uh, clear, very easy to watch. And it's uh, he does amazing stuff. And Cammy's Garage, he does lots of laminated shapes, which has intrigued me for a while. Um, but it was the combination of watching both of them, Cammy's Garage and Steve Garrison, that gave me the idea to give this a try. Okay, before I start, I'd like to number each one of these as I go. So this will be number one. I assume this is probably going to be about 25 or 30 different shapes. Okay, eye protection on. Alright, there's number one, that's our first piece. And that is our template for the second piece. So I put that down, line that up. 
Grab your marking tool. And we have our next one. Uh, we've progressed a bit. I'm on number 35 now. Uh, but it's to the point where I have to switch from the scroll saw to the band saw because uh, this is getting a bit awkward with the scroll saw. There we are. Number 36. Hey. Alright, so there we have 39 little semicircles cut out. You know, now the fun bit is gluing them up in pairs, sanding them down. So we'll start with number one. Gotta give it a nice smooth. This is actually probably the most important step. Really making sure it is flat. So if it's not flat, you're going to have ugly gaps. And the whole thing is a bit pointless. Okay, that's number one and number two. Ready for some glue. I'm using tight bond. Uh, this works very well. The thing I make sure of when I'm doing this is uh, I put a relatively generous amount because I want a, a good little bit of a squeeze out. Let's give it a nice pinch. Rubber bands hold these together quite well. Alright, that's one and two married. I repeat 18 times. Okay, so now we have 18 pairs and one left over. Pairs are coming out like that. But you can see the kind of shape that we are looking at. It looks less like a, a regular shell. To me, it looks more like a horseshoe crab at the moment. I've done these wedges quite thin, so it's not getting that uh, normal quite curve. So we'll see how we progress. So next step is sanding on the edges in here. See, there's slight difference. Change of light. So I need to smooth in here first. Best to get the inside done before you glue it all together. So I'm going to use my jur grit bits and just give it a little run over. Okay, so I've had a bit of chance to uh, uh, for the glue to dry. Done a little bit of shaping inside, but that's how we're looking so far. Section one, section two, section three. <laughs> Don't drop it. Section four. Uh, whatever. 
Anyhow, I need to start smoothing the insides of these. I'm going to do the insides. I'm not going to glue anything more until I get the insides all nicely polished up. So to do the inside, I'm going to be using, well, multiple tools, but the main ones I'm going to use is the Proxon uh, Long Neck Grinder. Using a few heads. That is an 80 grit head, and I'm going to use the little cutting tooth bit. I'm also going to use the uh, Arbitec uh, mini grinder, uh, mini sander bit, which uh, works very well. Alright, let's see how we get on. Okay, so I've got the insides uh, roughly smoothed out. In other words, I don't want to go too thin because then I might start to affect the integrity of the outer shell. So now I'm going to work on the back side and see what we have to work with. Now to sand this, uh, this is another one of the Steve Garrison tips I saw. It was a pillar drill or a, a bench drill. It's going to use one of these little simple backing pads sticker in there and I will start with a, a 80 grit sandpaper. Now this is quite a messy business so I've got a extraction system hooked right up onto it. I've got my air filters going and the other thing I found is quite important is to make sure the torque on the uh, uh, drill is quite low. Okay, so we're day two. And we've got our four sections are together. And the bigger one. And now it's going to be continuing sanding, shaping the outer curve. But there you can see I can hold it together now. Kind of how it's going to look. Uh, quite a lot of work to do around these corners for that hole and on the back that that glue up there is going to need a bit of work as well all right here's a few more sanding tips i'm trying to get inside these shells it's quite difficult to do that by finger so i made up a few little tools I uh, did this one, it's got a bit of a foam backing, fits in the drill press, put some velcro on the top, change the bits, but that's quite short, so I made a longer one. It's a wooden dowel, piece of wood inside, foam sponge, velcro, job done. And that can reach right inside. I keep that really low torque so it uh, polishes up things nicely. Alright, so we are final glue up stage. can now put those bits together and do the final bit of shaping.
Okay, final unwrapping. See these two little blocks I've added on the back. It's just so I can uh, just add them on there with a bit of a uh, hot glue. It allows me to uh, get the rubber bands to stay in awkward shapes. Don't mind the eyes there. But they come off, it comes off really simple. Okay, final unwrapping, there we go. Okay, so we need to do a bit more sanding back here. And I'm going to bring down that edge. Final step, I'm going to give it a bit of a bath with sweat spirits. That will really show me any little imperfections that might be in the wood. Not really nice. I made this one almost too thin. There's a few spots I couldn't actually sand anymore around the tail. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have just had to sand right through. All right, there we are. Hope you liked it. Hope you got something from that. Uh, please feel free to like and subscribe, share if you want, and uh, stay tuned. I'll be making lots more things like this. Have a great uh, holiday and a Merry Christmas to everyone.